This is the Gold Gold Panther F2. Look at the size of these tires. It's insane. It's a 750 watt legit mountain bike. I mean, this thing could tackle just about anything. Plenty of power. It's got, uh, well, look at the tires. We already went dirt riding on this thing. Handled it like a champ. Now, when it comes from the factory, it's limited at about 20, 21 miles per hour, but there is a hack that I can't tell you in this video, but it may be in the comments below, hint, hint, on how you can up the speed to about 28 miles per hour where that is uh, legal. So let's take a look around. This is the Go Go Panther F2. Why do they call it Panther? Because the thing is lightning quick off the line, man. Look at it. It looks like a beast, right? It's kind of uh, it's stripped down a little bit, but that's reflected in the price. So it's very, very fairly priced under 2000 bucks, which is great. It doesn't have fenders on it. doesn't have the rack. Yes, you can add these things later if you want, but why all, add all that extra weight to a bike if you really don't need it? So we took it out for a ride. Uh, we took it through some dirt, and she does great. It's got the seven-speed Shimano shifter. It's got a Bafang 750-watt motor, disc brakes, Really everything you need to take this on or off road and have some serious fun. Look at the tires. These are they're four inch tires, but they look super chunky for some reason. I'm not sure why they look bigger than the other bikes. I have to roll it next to it, see what it looks like. But yeah, it's an impressive looking bike. You put it up next to somebody else's mountain bike, they're like, whoa. It almost looks like a motocross bike, doesn't it? So that seven speed Shimano shifter and uh, disc brakes are gonna stop on a dime when you need them to. Really everything you need it to, to do. Weighs in at about 75 pounds and the battery's about 10 pounds in itself. And uh, yeah, she can handle whatever you throw at her. So we took it out of the box, very, very simple to install. On the box, I think it says it's 75% assembled, but I'm gonna go say it's closer to 90. Cause I really didn't have to do much as you'll see. Uh, again, a nice tip uh, if you don't if you're doing this by yourself, flip the box on its side and slide the bike out rather than try to deadlift it, unless you're massive and on some kind of a workout program. Just yank it out, real simple to do. Look, the back wheels on it, thank goodness. The brakes are attached, the gears are ready to go. You've got a full color instruction manual and some other information. It's really one of the nicest presentations of accessories I've ever seen. It's actually a really nice envelope. And uh, here's your manual. It tells you the instruction uh, order and what to look out for and what the controller does. So all that stuff is in there. It's pretty good English, which was uh, uh, definitely a benefit. That's always a plus. Here are your standard D power adapter, which does have the American uh, plug. So that's great. You plug it into your 110 and get plenty of juice. And it's a pretty generous battery too. It's a 48 volt, 15 amp hour large battery for those playing at home. That calculates to about 720 watt hours. So looking at somewhere, the range is very, very vague. It's difficult to tell. It really depends on a lot of things. But guess somewhere between 25 to 50 miles between full charges. I plug mine in before I begin the assembly so I get a little bit more juice. There is a charge from the factory, which is usually enough. And um, But I plug it in, top it off there, and I uh, get ready for my ride while I'm doing all this stuff. All right, so step one is putting the handlebars in. And you've got this uh, this little cap here with a little cardboard piece underneath it. So you should take that piece off. You don't need that anymore. And you're just going to pop your handlebars right on top. Make sure they're the right way. You're going to see that the stem is kind of facing outwards. And uh, don't worry about getting them perfectly straight right now. You're going to need to make a couple adjustments with the uh, bolts to make that happen. So the first thing you do is just nail this down. You can tighten that up pretty good. And uh, we're gonna tighten everything up before we take it out for our first ride. So this is just gonna adjust the handlebars into the stem, you know, connect it and make sure they're in there real tight so they don't go anywhere. And this is where you adjust the direction of it. So you kind of line it up where you think it's gonna be. You don't have to over tighten these because you don't have the wheel. It's really hard to gauge at this point. So. Just kind of tighten them up a little bit and then you'll come back and tighten these up later when you have the front wheel on. Now we're going to put the front wheel on. Fortunately, that's the next step. You got a couple of plastic protecting discs on the outside of the, the assembly here. Now this is the tricky part. If you're doing it by yourself, you got to get that disc between the calipers of the disc brakes. And it's a little tricky, but uh, once you do it a couple times, it's really not bad. You just let gravity bring it down and it rests right there and it's ready for your quick release axle. 
So we take the springs off, you'll see that the springs, the smaller end, is going to always face the inside. You're going to come with two springs, one for each side. Just pop it in the, the right side of the bike first, and you'll see it come out next to the disc. Remember to put your spring in there, the small side faces inwards, and then your little nut. You just twist that on top of there. Yeah, make sure you put the, the smaller side in it. Made that mistake before, don't want to do that. Then you take it all apart and do it all over again. It's kind of a lock nut, so that's pretty cool. So twist that on there, and then you'll go through the adjustment process. Because if you make this nut too tight, you won't be able to close the quick release lever on the other side. So just make it super, super tight. You'll feel when it's about ready, when you can just about not close it. And I saw somebody do this once. They grabbed the spokes to give them leverage. And don't do that. You're going to bend your spokes out. Grab the frame itself or the fork. And that's going to give you enough, uh, enough leverage to really lock that thing into place. And she's not going anywhere. Next up is the pedals. So you're going to take this off. This is really simple, too. This is the first time I've ever seen directions actually taped to the stem. This is kind of cool. So you have a right and a left. So you can, uh, the easiest way to do this is they tell you to use a wrench, but just finger tighten them first to get it in to match the threads. It tells you which way to turn it, which is really nice. And, and they do, they give you all the tools you need. This is a 15 millimeter wrench. And then when you've got it in there all the way up, just tighten it real good. And uh, they don't have the official torque. You can do that, but as long as it's super tight where you can't, you can't really tighten it much more. That's going to be enough. Those pedals aren't coming off and same thing on the other side. The seat is already installed, which is nice. It's a base seat. It's got a little bit of cushion on it. And uh, then this has a quick release as well. So just find your proper height right about where your inseam is and lock that into place. You can adjust the angle of the seat too. I know for guys, uh, I'd rather have it tipped down a little bit. Uh, here's your tires, minimum five, five pounds per square inch. That's a, that's a, I mean, if you want to go dirt riding, that's probably pretty cool. The mountain riding and stuff. I prefer them, we do mostly road riding, so I take them all the way up to 30 because you're going to get the best battery life out of that too, especially if you're on the road. Now putting the battery in, you have to put the key in and unlock it first. And then uh, pop your battery in, you'll see the six slots are in the bottom, and you'll know which way this goes. And you should put the bottom in first and then the top will snap in. And then uh, you can turn the key on the other side to lock it in and take the key out. No one's taking that battery out without. Now you can charge the battery on the bike or off the bike, whichever you prefer. You know, she's not going anywhere. And then we turn it on for the first time, make sure everything works. She fires right up. There's your LCD display. It is ready to rock and roll with five levels of pedal state. Now here's the secret. You can't, it's limited at the factory, 20, about 20 miles an hour. But if you do this procedure, if it's legal where you live, make sure it's legal first. I know in a lot of European countries you can't do this but here in the states you can take it up to 28 miles an hour and that's how you do that all right so took it out on a little dirt ride get a little dirt on the tires right and it handled this with no problem it's got a nice adjustable suspension front fork which takes a lot of the a lot of the bump out of the road so that's kind of nice too but this thing really excels in the dirt and on the road too it's a really comfortable smooth ride and it feels real tight again i tightened everything up make sure she's real tight as far as the handlebars go so Everything is pretty darn tight from the factory. Everything's installed perfectly. The seven speed shifter worked perfectly. The disc brakes are perfectly adjusted from the factory. So the people at Go Gold did a really nice job putting this thing together with the pre assembly. Again, it's like 90% assembled when you get it from the factory. So I did the speed test before I uh, hacked the controller, and it went up to about 20.1 miles an hour. Pedaling in pedal assist five, again, five levels of pedal assist. It does have a thumb throttle too, and you're gonna find that on the left side here, I believe. And I uh, had my Facebook glasses, got that thing pumped all the way up. Just took a nice leisurely ride to kind of feel it out. They say you should pedal these things first. If this is your first electric bike, take it out and ride it like a bicycle first. And get the feel of it before you kick into that powerful 750 watt motor. So uh, you, you've got your balance about you. You know what this thing's gonna do. You know what to expect. The torque is pretty good. They promise 80 Newton meters of torque. And uh, I can attest that uh, even in pedal assist level one, hitting that throttle, it gives you a little push. It's kind of nice. So I took it around the neighborhood, did about five miles and she rides like a cloud. It's perfect. It's an excellent ride. 
I'm about five foot eleven, and uh, this bike is slated to fit people somewhere between five seven and six five. So most people are going to fit this bike pretty comfortably. It's not really a step over, so you're going to have to have a little bit of uh, limberness in your loins to be able to get on this thing. But uh, for a guy, it's a super ride. I'm I'm a big fan. I was very impressed with this Gold Gold Panther F2. And I think you're gonna like this bike a lot too. Take it on the street, take it on the trails, take it on the beach, and have a little bit of fun, get some exercise. Go Go Panther F2. Thanks to the folks at Go Go for sending this our way.